Joining me now is the founder and managing director at the Bonson Group, David Bonson. David, it's great to have you this weekend. Thank you for being here. Let me kick it off with that jobs number. It was way lower than expected, partly obviously due to the strikes and the uh, hurricanes that we all endured in October. Your reaction? Yes, it sort of forced me a long time ago to take rolling three-month averages because mm-hmm. there is a tendency in this BLS number to get lumpy, sometimes even on a high side. It's not sustainable. The low side is subject to revisions. And so we use three-month running averages just to smooth that out. Obviously, this was a very, very bad month. I suspect over three months it looks a little better, but still slowing, and that's the key. So what what do you see in terms of the other part of the story, the inflation part of the story? The Federal Reserve is meeting next week after the election. We've got the next Fed meeting. Does a weak jobs number like this um, get the Fed to cut rates again after the election, do you think? And do you think that it will be effective in reigning in inflation? Um, Well, there's a virtually 100 percent chance they're going to cut another quarter point in November. Previously, markets thought it could be half a point. That's off the table now. Um, Maria, honestly, I don't believe that what the Fed's doing with rates has much to do with inflation at all. Uh, The housing market is frozen. We the the area where inflation still exists is in housing because sellers are frozen. And until rates come down counterintuitively, you can't start seeing activity in housing. I ultimately think that the Fed is really cutting because they know we have way too much debt about to reset at higher rates. So they're trying to get in front of that. The inflation issue is not a big story right now, other than the embedded inflation from a couple years ago. But year over year, it's all about housing. And what do you think fixes the housing issue, David? I think that when rates come lower, mortgage rates, sellers that right now have a low rate on what they're living in uh, are more inclined to sell to go to another house where they're not going to want to pay 7% in a new home when they're paying 3% in an old home. And that's the counterintuitive thing that froze housing is sellers don't want to get rid of their lower mortgage even though they're ready for a bigger, better home. Uh, Obviously, the biggest issue is we're undersupplied. You have to get a lot more houses online, but I don't think that's a Fed issue. And candidly, I don't think it's a federal government issue. I think it's state and local. We need more housing. Yeah, for sure. So, David, how do you want to allocate capital right now? Obviously, the week ahead, you've got this election, a lot of betting going on on Wall Street, and then you've also got the Federal Reserve meeting uh, the day after. What are your thoughts in terms of putting new money to work right here in stocks? Well, we're being really adamant with clients that we have no interest in trying to trade around the noise. We think a lot of traders are going to be on the sidelines. I've seen this presidential election after presidential election in my career managing money. Volatility will be enhanced, especially, Maria, if we don't have a clear outcome or clear winner right away. But see, again, that gets sorted out one way or the other eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, I would just be cautious if you get on the other side of the election, whatever that outcome is. The valuations are very high. Index investors are buying 37 percent, the highest in history by far, of the S&P 500 in 10 companies, about 15 percent in two or three companies. I mean, it's really concentrated with some big tech names. So we, as dividend growth investors, are much more value-oriented, finding great value in some energy names, consumer staples. Uh, free cash flow matters a lot to us. It doesn't matter a lot right now in the S&P 500. Wow. Yeah, that sure is a narrow rally. David, it's great to get your insights. We so appreciate your time. Thank you.